Good morning, everyone. Wrecker here. Wrecker runs DCUO. Back with a new video this morning with my DCUO fire tank build and loadout updated for 2020. Be my last in my series of testing all the tank powers. And I'll be switching to my preferred power after I'm finished with this video, actually. Um, and I'm. Um, Test and, and been thoroughly worked on this and ran all the new raids or the new raid and done all the new bounties. I've got all of them over 50, so I've used this and it's all been as fire. And I've ran the, the new raid and elite version and the regular version and uh, tested fire pretty thoroughly. I've really enjoyed it too, it's a really cool power. But after I do this video, I'll be uh swapping in the, in the next few days I'll be doing another video ranking all the tank powers on DC from strongest to weakest and uh, the ones that I find are more user friendly and just my general opinion on the tank powers because I've really tested them all really thoroughly now and, and enjoyed doing it but I really like fire and that's what I'm here to talk to you about today and so we'll go right into it. I always start with my stat point allocations when I do any kind of build. And the easiest way for me to explain it is for me just to do it. So first thing you want to do is make sure you do your uh, movement mode. And it doesn't matter if you don't have 499 skill points. It doesn't matter how many skill points you have. These builds that I share with you will work for you if you'll start and allocate your skill points in the way I'm telling you to it'll help you and be very beneficial for you so no matter what your skill point level is put your skill points in your movement mode first and I it's very important no matter what role you use tank DPS healer controller to get these two the stunt resistance the stun resistance excuse me and the restraint resistance because they both will help you tremendously uh, for being encased and rooted and, and get you out of stuns. So after we get those, you want to go into your weapon combos as a tank. You want to make sure you use a weapon that will give you a quick lunge. And you want a weapon that has a quick combo that can regenerate your own power so that you can do a little bit of damage and, and regen your own power so that you're not that big of a strain on the controller and the uh, to help him out a little bit and so you're a little more self-sufficient but having a lunge is essential because so many bosses you have to have a lunge you want to use something like a one-handed or brawling I use one-handed because it's a crowbar it fits my character but I like it it's really quick and it's got a really good fast combo that can build up my own power help regen my own power back so once I get that combo and I've got my movement mode my weapon combo and I get my iconic powers. I always get the hard light shield. I, I found that's just man, it is uh, something you can hang your hat on. It's a really strong shield, one of if not the strongest in the game, and and it's important in, to have as a tank. And the lasso, I get it, and I really like the new artifact, which I'll talk about that more in just a little bit. But I'll make sure I get that iconic power. I don't get Amazonian deflection uh, for fire. I haven't found that I need it, but if you're getting taking a lot of damage, you need an extra shield, that's a really good one to get. Now, after I got my uh, iconic powers, we'll just we'll take a we'll go into my stat point allocation, but before that, we'll take a look at fire. And this will kind of explain why I'm going to allocate my points the way that I'm doing it. In tank row, you gain the following benefits, 50% health, 50% income and healing while not blocking. So you want your tank health to be as, as high as possible. And again, the fire, so you get grounded an, uh, another 35% defense while not blocking. And burning enemies will bump that up to 60% while not blocking. So you want your health as high as possible. This is the only tank in my opinion that you don't go dominance first when you go down your skill points so even if you just got 50 skill points once you use those 20 at the top to get to the bottom you want to go health first because of the nature of 
this power because it's buff is connected directly to how high your health is so the higher your health is the higher this buff is going to drive it and the more you're going to stay alive and be beneficial to the group so now that I've explained all that sorry to be so blah but you kind of got to understand why you're doing what you're doing and you always want to go down the middle for your tank because you get the extra buff here plus you get it says you get 5% dominance you actually are getting 10 in tank row because whatever dime you get is doubled now because of the nature of this power you're healing yourself with fire you want to make sure you get these max out your critical healing chance and magnitude and even if, if you only have 70 skill points do that first get those first before you go down to the bottom now once you have those it's a little bit different you won't go dominance first like you would on every other tank or you, yeah, excuse me, like you would on every other tank. You're going to max out as much health as you can get possible first. So, I can max it out all the way out. Once you get that health maxed out, now is when you want to get restoration and dominance. Normally for a tank, you would take dominance first. And we'll go over and take a look at the power description so that you can see it and that's one thing about what's great about the game you don't have to take none of the stuff I share with you or in my opinion it's based on facts that's easily accessible right here on the game so because we're self-healing we're gonna go restoration first and it's combined with dominance to de determine the potency of healing and shield abilities so if you're getting heals your healing multiplier is 30% restoration plus 25% your dominance. So you want your healing to be, your restoration is affecting your healing just a little bit more than your dominance is. The same way that is in your shield strength, your dominance is a little bit stronger than your restoration if you look right there. So, we're want a, yes I want my shield to be strong but I want to get the max heals that I can get possible because of the nature of this power. So it's, you see it says the same thing, just swapped up. But the difference, the reason that I don't max out restoration totally instead of getting dominance is because right here at high levels, dominance must be higher than the enemy willpower for crowd control's effects to be effective. So in other words, my dominance has to be more and has to be stronger than the enemies that I'm going against for my f pulls to be effective and my juggles and any kind of uh, control effects with my powers. So I have to put skill points into dominance too. I can't just max out restoration. People, a lot of people are like, man, you're fire tank, just get all resto. I'm like, no, you want to get your health high first. Your, your uh, armor has plenty enough dominance to carry you through till you get your skill points at uh, built up but because of the nature of the buff it doesn't matter if you're low skill points get your health first I'm just explaining if you have higher skill points what you can do with the rest of them now you saw that it's about a uh, rest of 30 percent uh, dominance was 20 on the self heals so the way I do it I go about uh, three to two rest of to dominance and you want to make sure that you uh, are getting some dominance though because you want your willpower, you want your dominance to be well higher than what's required for your instances. And again, if you have low skill points, it's no problem. Go down this middle first. If you've only got 80 skill points, Get the flight, get the weapon combos, get the self-heal, critical chance, critical magnitude, and get all the health you can first. Once you get enough skill points when you're getting around the 300 range that you can get more than that health, then worry about getting your restoration and your dominance. And because of the nature of this power and the way that you're healing yourself, you've got to, uh, in my opinion, get those first. And because of the way your buff makes your health go 
as high. You want to make sure you max out your health. And get that restoration for your cell fields. The dominance for your shield strength and for your control effects. So you can be in control of the field out there. Which will keep everyone else alive. And that's your job as a tank. But that's the only tank where you don't go down first with your skill points. And I'll talk to you about my loadout. And I go from left to right in the, in the order that I'm going to use them. That's just how I do it. Uh, start with engulf. It sets your enemies on fire and it pulls them to you. And enemies on, power, on fire are important because it affects with a lot of your other power interactions here. It helps keep their attention and aggression on you. And it affects your self heals that you're getting. Then I've got emulation next and engulfs me in flames protecting me from damage for a short time and enemies that attack me will be burned over time which helps keep the aggression focused on me uh, burning determination engulfs yourself and focus flames hitting yourself incoming attacks will trigger additional heals up to 10 times so when you get healed hit, or attacked hit up to 10 times you're going to get heals back from that this is your best heal back drive it, and if you notice, I haven't done a bad job saying it, but that, that burns enemies. Burning enemies take additional damage. Uh, a lot of the power interactions are, and your heals are, are greater if our enemies are burning. But Backdraft pulls everything to you, and it gives you a really nice heal. Burnout breaks you out and heals you, gives you a great big burst heal, and it breaks you and the group that you're in out free from control effects it's important that you have a group or a self breakout if you don't use burnout make sure that you get a, a breakout trinket from one of the vendors so that you can break yourself out because there's times that when it's that oh crap moment you know good examples when you're doing these bounties and it says in big red letters get away from Calabac or basically it's saying get away from Calabac or you're gonna die like let's say you're in a control effect and you can't get loose, you can hit burnout, get that breakout. It'll not only will it break you out, but the rest of your group, and you can get away. So it's important to have that. If you're not going to use a group breakout power like burnout, if you're not going to use burnout in your power, make sure you've got a tank trinket. But I use it. I think it works really well. A lot of people don't use it because it does have a little bit of a cooldown, but I use that white mod in my back that accelerates the cooldown so it makes it cool down really quick and you get it back the next one hard light shield i've always used it very much in several tank powers it's but it's a great damage dissipator it's awesome works really well and and while you've got that shield up it kind of gives you a, a chance to heal yourself and, and get back some of the health that you've been losing but that's my loadout. The only thing different that I do, I do substitute the engulf for the mesmerizing lasso because I like to use that new uh, mesmerizing lasso artifact. But while we're talking about artifacts, we'll talk about our white mines here first. In the weapon, I use the absorption adapter so that way a weapon combo will give me an additional shield. There's not really a head socket that works for what I do as a tank. Fortified Assault, you don't want to block, so this gives me an additional 10% defense while I'm not blocking. You, there's hardly ever as a fire tank or any tank nowadays that you need to block. But when I do, uh, because of that, that's why I use this mod. In my back, that's why I talked about earlier for burnout. That's one of the reasons I use burnout instead of a breakout trinket. That reduces its uh, cooldown, and it's, I think it's essential for you to have here. I use Hardy because of the nature of this buff. That it's uh you got want your health as high as possible remember that with fire that's the number one stat your health you want it as high as possible and because of that i use that uh hardy mod there really not one in your legs it's a uh, good deadly block i use in my feet that way when i if i do have to block and enemies hit me they are not knocked away from me they fall down at me and they take some damage which helps me keep aggression on them a lot of people argue with me about the one in your hand socket. I use the regenerative shield. It's not that big of a shield or big of a heal, but I still recommend it. Uh, any heal is better than no heal. So I really like using that mod there. As far as your artifacts, 
Two of them are essential, doesn't matter what kind of tank you are. The manacles of force absorbs, when, when that unshakable is triggered, it absorbs 50% of, of incoming damage and reapplies it over the next five seconds. And when unshakable happens, it resets all your uh, shields. For us, it res as fire, it would reset the emulation. And all your shield cooldowns are reduced by 10%. So that's 10% less time that it takes emulation to cool down and 10% less time that it takes hard light shield to cool down. So that one's important for you. No matter which tank you are, I think that's essential. Plus you get a 4% dominance boost. The mystical symbol of the 7, when hit by an enemy, your increased defense by 5% for each enemy, each enemy within 5 yards and your healing is increased by 10%. Plus, you regenerate a small amount of health based on your restoration each time you're struck by an enemy. So, we've got high restoration, so by using this, we're going, even if you don't, uh, I think you should use this one. It's a great one because it increases your defense and increases your total healing by 10%. I think those two artifacts you have to have no matter what kind of tank you are. This next one's up for your preference. I'm showing you a loadout with the Everyman prototype, which I really like that very much, but I'm also going to show you some with the Mesmerizing Lasso. If you don't have the Lasso, I recommend the Everyman. I'm currently leveling the Everyman or the Lasso to get it to 200. One of the uh, things that I like about it, besides the effects that it has where it pulls all the enemies to you, I'll show you in a little bit, is that it gives you 5% dominance where the Everyman prototype only gives you 2%. So that's a big deal for me, being able to get that extra dominance. All right, so I went over the loadout, and we talked about the augments, and now I need to show you a little bit of your rotation. You know, I always want to start pulling everything to me first, and I'm going to clip that with the emulation so that I've got them on fire. Love to hit that backdrop, burn them up, juggle them up, keeping them coming towards me. After that, I'm going to get my hard light shield when that emulation is cooling down. And then I'm going to weapon combo, weapon combo, wear them out, hit other powers to keep hold aggression. When that hard light shield is about halfway on cooldown, I'm going to come, come back to emulation. And any time during this, and I'm getting in trouble, then I'm going to hit... Uh, and get me a good self heal here and uh, hit burning termination or burnout. I save the burnout for when I've got to have. I guess it mixed up because they look the same. Uh, I save the burnout for when I really need a breakout, but the burning determination I'll hit any time I need a heal on that. And backdraft are two of the heals that I use most. Go show you some action against. Uh, some of the big boy bounties that are out there now, and then I'll show you the lasso in action too, but I really, really like it very much. And then while I'm uh, warping here, I just want to thank everyone for the new subs, and man, I'm just so excited. I haven't forgot about that $100 million drawing. My children have picked the winner. I'll be a posting that on that video on my YouTube channel so very excited and very happy to give away the this 100 million to help folks out but I'll show you this fire tank build a little bit in action here looks like Aries is up so let's head there now and there's nobody in this phase but it doesn't really matter uh, I'm not going to beat Ares by myself, but just to kind of show you this in action. Remember, I'm going to pull stuff to me. I'm going to set myself on fire, which that is also a damage mitigator. It's a shield. All right, when it starts getting cooled about halfway down, I go into my hard light shield. Need a little heal there, so I go over a little burn determination. Remember, when that hard light shield starts dissipating, or when I really take a big hit like that, I want to go ahead and get up... Uh, Emulation. Now, as soon as that hard light shield gets up, oh, I didn't talk about the boo and my trinkets and such. If you have a boo junior available to you, use that boo junior because it is so good about helping you to tank. It, it helps to 
taunt and hold aggression, but more importantly, it'll just give you a random shield. And this is one of the few times that you will block in the game. When it tells you to block like that, unless you're ate up with the dumbass, I would block. So I shouldn't cut, but block. But again, use that Boo Jr. See how he gives you that shield? Man, that's a strong shield. It really saved my butt so many times, besides him helping your team. But it, that random shield that Boo Jr. gives you so awesome. I'm pretty sure the baby Boo does that too. If you don't have that, make sure when the seasonal, which is coming up pretty quick, comes out, you go ahead and get you one. But as you can see, there's nobody else here. I'm not getting buffed in any way. Um, this is just my tank loadout versus this bounty hunt. Now, um, I do like the lasso very much now. As again, like I was telling you, it gives you that bonus. Oh, uh, besides the Boo Jr., I've got a maxed out sidekick. He's going to help con enemies. And he's gonna heal you. And he, see how he just give me a shield. He shields me, and he throws me power. It, a lot of times, he'll, those little heals and power that he gives you will be what saves your butt, keeps you from dying. You see my whoops and set adapter shield that I'm getting put up too because of me using these combos. Now, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the lasso. Last out, if you if you have multiple targets, that it will tether those targets to you. If it's a boss, it hard haunts that boss to you. See that shield Boo Junior's giving me right there, just random as heck. I love that about that. But it hard taunts him to me. If there's ads around though, if I target one of those ads, it'll pull those ads to me and jerk them all around to me. These guys. Are uh, there's only 30 seconds left. I'm not going to leave you guys. But after I get done here, um, we'll go over and, and uh, I'll show you how that lasso really works. Besides the 5% dominant, how did it uh, tethers those ads to you. But I really like this fire tank. Oh, here we go. This fire tank build. Uh, and you see how I've got her tethered to me and it just keeps her tied. And wherever I go, she's going. So it's a it's a really cool if there's multiple ads when it just spawns out like an octopus from her. And I'll show you that now. But that Boo Junior, the maxed out sidekick, a maxed out supply drop, and I recommend a maxed out bottle of soda, shitty soda, just because of the buffed it gives you but you just need to make sure that you got a drink i in my consumable spot i use those chronometric emitters i'll show you why in just a second they work great here you can really see how that lasso works ah, it didn't tether them. yep there it goes you can see how it's tethering those two and pulling them to each other it groups them up and pulls them to me the reason i use the chronometric emitters it stuns the heck out of whatever that i hit with it and it's less damage that I will take. It helps mitigate the damage that I take. And it refreshes aggression on the enemies. But look how it just bunches them all together. It's really cool. I like that very much. Uh, I'm really in love with that artifact, to be honest with you. Uh, enamored with it. It's been through, it's, it, it makes it so much easier for you to tank. Look how it just groups everybody up for you. I'm not having to constantly hit a pool. And man, it, those guys' aggression are totally on me. Nobody else. And I uh, really like that. Plus, I love the 5% bonus that I get for dominance, which just makes you a, a stronger tank. Really like that. Pretty cool deal. And that's my fire tank and loadout. Updated for 2020. And there I've showed it to you in action. And... Uh, explained it pretty thoroughly if you have any questions make sure you just ask them on the video and i will answer them as, as soon as possible and if you got any comments uh 
just please leave them there and, and uh, I'll get back to you and respond to you like I always do. I want to thank everyone again for the subs. Not only do we have the, the 100 million giveaway that I did a video, my last video on. Since then, we just exploded on past 100. Very happy and, and just excited. And it's all you guys, nothing to do with me. Uh, you guys are the ones that make it possible. And that you guys are the ones that make me want to do these videos to help people. Because I know what it's like playing this game and not having anyone to help you. So that's why I'm here to help you. So thank you, though, for the subs. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the shares. If you haven't subbed yet, go over and hit that sub button, pound it for me, and uh, share these videos. If you don't like the video, hit dislike. Tell me why you don't like it. Uh, I don't mind the de thumbs downs, but I'd like to know why you don't like it and what I can do to improve. But I, I'll be posting the 100 million winner today, and they'll be meeting them in-game and, and giving that 100 million. To, there's a 100 million giveaway to celebrate the 100 subs. I'll be having a video. My next video will be ranking the tank powers from best to worst. And now that I've tested them all, and and uh, we really look forward to that. Look forward to keep churning out the content for y'all. If there's something you would like a video on, just post it, and I'll make one for you. But uh, just God bless y'all. Thank you for subbing. Thank you for watching. If you got any questions, like I say, just post them in the comments, and I'll sure get to them and answer you. Thank you. God bless you. And have a great day.